In our last video, we explored the work of the first pioneering antiquarians of the modern age. We discussed how archaeologists Arthur Poznanski and Neil Steed, along with many other astute individual researchers, unraveled a possible key to unlocking the true purpose and indeed historical significance of the site. They concluded that the site, due to academia's reluctance to tag any ancient ruin with a date of more than 4,000 years, is the oldest ruin on Earth. The archaeologists discovered an alignment with the solstices and spring equinox, which only occurred around 17,000 years ago. However, there are many other intriguing areas of interest yet to be fully understood. Along with the volumes of photographic documentations of precise measurements, independent researchers also discovered that the site's gray stonework also possesses a curious magnetic property. The question is, if these ancient people knew of this interesting characteristic, what was the purpose of using said stone? Was the stone slowly magnetized by a technology once present at the site, now lost to history? Along with the gray stone, however, the site also contains an equal amount of red sandstone, which was used to build the site, yet this red stone does not share the enigmatic magnetism of its gray counterpart. Perhaps the sandstone is somehow immune to what was responsible. Perhaps this is why the Great Pyramids were built from sandstone, to avoid the masonry taking on this magnetic charge. Perhaps, but I digress. Puma Punku is what we like to call a smoking gun, a site which clearly displays masonry skills of its ancient constructor, precision-cut stone masonry, which today could only be achieved with the use of advanced stone-cutting machinery. Shrouded in mystery, the archaeological side of Puma Punku is one of the biggest headaches for mainstream archaeology to explain. So how would an ancient culture, one which was far less capable than modern man, cut, shape, and transport from many miles away, carvings out of some of the world's toughest stone accomplished with such incredible precision. A group able to transport blocks of stone, sometimes weighing far more than 50 tons to the site, effortlessly placing them in position, often using a placement technique indicative of polygonal methodology. Interestingly, after investigating possible causes for this characteristic, it was realized that the building material was not granite, as it had long been assumed, but was in fact andesite. Andesite is the most iron-rich volcanic material we are aware of. It can contain around 15% iron oxide and can have up to 4% magnetite. Thus, the stone, it seems, could have already been displaying magnetic characteristics when placed where it now lay. Yet the question still persists. Why did this stone get selected as the building material for the temple? It was built by a civilization that brought the stone from many miles away, so the suggestion that it was the only stone available would not be a logical conclusion. It was chosen by a group who were seemingly meticulous in their application. So it is quite possible that the magnetic characteristic was somehow utilized by the builders. Thankfully. It is only a matter of time before Puma Punku's secrets are fully understood, and we finally discover who built it. It is a place we find highly compelling. Although the Olmec culture has been historically established as having flourished within the now dense jungles of Guatemala, there also exists many pre-Olmec ruins and artifacts that are still baffling researchers and historians alike. The Great Head of Guatemala being one of the most controversial of all. This enormous stone face indicates that not only the Olmecs, or indeed native Hispanic race, once called Guatemala home. A gigantic, masterfully carved stone head, with a face of fine features, thin lips, and large nose, once engulfed in millennia of vegetation, directed to the sky as if in eternal prayer. The discovery unsurprisingly attracted a lot of attention, yet just as predictably, due to its unquestioned controversy, quickly slipped into the pages of forgotten history. The initial discovery first emerged when Dr. Oscar Rafael Padilla Lara, 
a doctor of philosophy, lawyer, and notary, received a photograph of the head in 1987. Along with a vague description, it stated that the photograph was taken in the 1950s by the owner of the land, and that it was located, quote, somewhere in the jungles of Guatemala. The site was later established to have been 10 kilometers from a small village in the south of Guatemala. However, when Dr. Padilla managed to travel to the site, a short while after the discovery had been widely circulated throughout the country, he found that the site, along with the Caucasian featured stone face, had been obliterated. He stated, quote, It was destroyed by revolutionaries about 10 years ago. We had located the statue too late. It was used as target practice by rebels. This totally disfigured it. Sort of like the way the Sphinx in Egypt had its nose shot off by the Turks. Only worse, the eyes, nose, and mouth had been completely destroyed." End quote. Padilla was able to measure its height as having been between 4 and 6 meters. Although, predictably, the stone head had been destroyed due to its controversial nature, it may still shine light on who was flourishing in the jungles, far before any Olmec had ever stepped foot there. Additionally, and fortunately, the stone head is not the only pre-Olmec statue ever found. Named the Fat Boys, these other artifacts are another set of statues that, although not as racially controversial, possess characteristics even more so for the scientific world. These statues, retrieved and displayed, were discovered many years later to actually contain magnetic elements which along with a number of anthropomorphic artworks from the same suspected civilization, have magnetic characteristics positioned at specific locations. On the Fat Boys, it is found at the navel, although the animal statues seemingly contain them around the faces. So, the question is obvious. How did an ancient culture, located so far back within history, not only know about this magnetism, but managed to create such artworks. Why did they create them? Were they attempting to tell their distant ancestors something? Regardless of the controversy surrounding their creators, they are undoubtedly highly compelling. In February 2010, Project Avalone was hosting a video interview with Klaus Donner, a specialist in evidence of past civilizations. During the presentation, a group of very intriguing artifacts were introduced to the world. Found in Ecuador, a set of 12 cups made from solid jade, all of different size, yet when the bigger jug's contents is poured between the smaller cups, it fills them perfectly. The jug is highly magnetic, but only on the inside. This should be a physical impossibility, this unique property, along with numerous other strange features they contain, has led me to my speculation of them being used by alien visitors. Pyramids can be found on all continents of Earth, all show alignments with star constellations. When the jade cups are examined under ultraviolet light, they too reveal different star constellations on each cup, they are also numbered, in a language that is known as Sanskrit, an ancient language claimed to predate the Aztecs. Along with the cups a very strange looking serving plate, with very strange formations of unknown function on the top, and maybe the most intriguing of all, what appears to be an Illuminati pyramid, with 13 steps and an all-seeing eye, was found in the same location. On the base of the pyramid, is also the constellation of Orion, along with an inscription in Sanskrit, the translation of Professor Kurtz Childman read, The son of the Creator comes. Who made these cups? And who used them? When traveling in an anti-gravitational craft, I would presume you would encounter high levels of artificial gravity, thus strong magnetic fields. Did the liquid which once filled these cups experience interstellar travel? Why were pyramids built in alignment with star constellations, if not serving a purpose? Were these ancient structures connected through an unknown force? Are there similar structures somewhere else in the universe? It is not a large leap of the imagination to speculate that these jade cups were connected to some form of alien activity, 12 cups each showing a different star system in black light, which show evidential traces of a magnetic liquid which they contained some time in the distant past. Was our planet used as a meeting location for 12 tribes of aliens? 
With so much knowledge lost due to unknown events in our distant past, it may take many years before we truly understand what our ancestors were aware of, and what strange liquid these cups once contained, and the entities that may have been served to. Stones have been found nearby, that illustrate the pyramid being placed at top a larger pyramid, a man holding the pyramid exactly as it was shown on the artifact. Rays of light can be seen from his eyes, you can also see two figures on his right. On his head he has something like a small helmet with an antenna linked to a strange object above him. What these artifacts were used for remains a mystery, 